Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to paint a grove of cherry trees. I think it's going to be a lot of fun today, and I'll show you start to start to finish how to do it on your own. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, buddy. He's a man in chat today, so if you've got questions while I'm painting that, you can ask them, and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. <laughs> Some days it's like I've never done this before. All right. So you're going to show them step to start? Step to start. Is that what I said? <laughs> All right. You know what I meant. <laughs> Welcome, guys. I'm glad to have you joining us today. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be doing step to start here. Start to finish. Um, take two. Take two. Yeah. The joy of live streaming. Okay. Um, I am going to be using a 9 by 12 inch canvas for our project today. This is the Fredericks Mixed Media Canvas Board. I haven't done anything to it. Uh, if you wanted to prep it, you could probably do like a light uh, yellow oxide or something like that. Um, I, you'll want a pencil or chalk of some sort to draw out your perspective on this because we're going to be talking a little bit about perspective. Uh, for this one and then you're going to want some sort of a scruffy brush to do your foliage on your trees and your grasses so I'm going to grab a fan brush I've got a couple deerfoot stipplers um, I've also got my aspen brushes these are the um, Princeton aspen series um, so I've got a couple filberts around and an angle brush for that and then to do my tree trunks I'm going to want like a, a small round brush to be able to do the small tree trunk uh, sections so that's pretty much our main brushes and then maybe a large one to do our background um, so I'm going to use the angle um, two inch angle from Princeton Aspen as well all right um, let's go over our colors <coughs> excuse me all right sorry coughing fit <laughs> break uh, burnt sienna uh, I'm sorry burnt umber burnt sienna uh, Indian Yellow Hue Cadmium Yellow Light. This one is Quinacridone Magenta, quite a bit of it. And I also added a warmer toned red. So I've got a uh, permanent alizarin crimson, or you could use like a cadmium red medium or something like that. Just a little bit more of an orangey toned red. Um, this one's actually kind of on the pink side, the alizarin crimson, but I did want to compare these two um, to show you kind of the differences. Um, Quinacridone, or I'm sorry, um, Doxazine Purple. Uh, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue green shade, and then some unbleached titanium, titanium white, and gloss glazing liquid. All right, let's go over our drawing. Let's do it. Just switch back. Oh, oh. Thanks. Um, so our horizon line is not quite on the third, which would be like down here somewhere. So it's just above it, between the third and the and the halfway mark. So somewhere in here, we're going to do our horizon line. It really doesn't matter, just as long as you've got some grass. And this is going to just mark out right there, kind of where our grass is ending, sky begins. And then um, somewhere over in here, and really doesn't matter where you put it, just uh, you know, somewhere wherever you decide you want to have your trees pointing to, we're gonna do a, a vanishing point. And it'll just be just above the horizon line. So imagine myself or whoever it is that's taking this photograph, standing on the horizon line, uh, however tall they would be, that's how tall you're going to make your little um, vanishing point right here. So just slightly above the horizon line, it's not right on it. And then we're going to say our first tree, our main tree, that's right here in the focal point area, right on the third, is gonna be coming all the way up to the top here. So this is where we will start our perspective. So wherever this tree trunk comes down, which is about halfway here, so kind of halfway down right here and right about on the third of this part of the canvas. So if you split this into three parts here, right on this one. Um, so we'll want to kind of start there so we kind of have an idea of how tall it's going to be. And then so we're going to take the bottom 
and do a line from the bottom all the way to our vanishing point. So all of our tree trunks, if they're in a line, which we are in this photograph, uh, are going to be on this line right there. So like that, they're all going to line up on that line. And then the tops of them are all going to line up this way. And we're just gonna do a line like that. Okay, so all the tops of the trees are gonna stay within this section here and and then these far ones we can also do a line for them if we want to do another line of trees which I'm not I'm not sure if I'm going to get real fancy with this and go ahead and do a bunch more trees or I can even just kind of do little marks off there without doing the whole line I can just kind of all this is on here just go ahead and mark out where my other tree trunks are going to be. And there's a way, I, I don't remember what it is, you can, I think you mark out your second tree and then do some sort of a crisscross, I can't remember how to do it, how to measure these ones. There was I, I did it once before in a video in the Paris trees video, so if you want to get these exactly marked out the way they need to be, you can watch them. Sorry, doing a plug for my other video. I don't remember. It's been too long. I don't do this very often. So, all right. And then these ones on this side, I'm going to leave some space because they're not exact. There's like a, you know, an opening here. And then there's some trees coming off this way that are coming off the canvas. And they're, they're coming up here because these ones are closer to us. So this one's a little bit wider of an angle and these ones are all along here and then they're gonna have tree branches there. Okay, so I think that'll get us. Hopefully that made sense. Mm -hmm. um, I actually kind of wanted a little bit closer to me maybe. I don't know, there, there is a shadow line here too that I'm gonna go ahead and kind of mark out so there's kind of a shadow in the trees there, and then there's a shadow coming out this way. These might come down just a little bit more than I marked them. I feel like they kind of a little bit farther down, maybe. Well, it won't matter. All right, we can adjust it as we go. Let's go ahead and paint. <clears throat> All right was going to do this one. I'm not sure. We'll we'll try it with this and see. We're probably going to lose all of our lines. I'm going to get that wet and get a little bit of water. Got a little paint left on my can canvas there, palette. A little bit of white. And I'm going to spray my canvas. Just one little spray of water, it doesn't take a lot, but it'll open up the fibers of the canvas, get it ready to paint, accept the paint better. And I'm gonna use just the tiniest little bit of yellow, like a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of yellow, just for a little bit of a warmer glow in my sky right here where it's coming out. And I'm gonna go ahead and go over my trees here. All the way up. Doesn't look like much yet. It's okay. It's there. And you do want to paint your white parts of your canvas. You don't want to leave your white canvas peeking through. It's not it's not paint. It's just so it's not sealed really for it's just I don't know. Trust me. <laughs> I'll trust you. Okay. Yeah, about <clears throat> maybe two parts ultramarine to one part thalo blue here. Going pretty dark up in this corner. I'm going to get just a little bit of burnt umber just to make it a little bit more of a natural color because that colors straight out of the box are pretty, pretty saturated. I think I wanted a little bit more purple than that. 
get a little bit more of the ultramarine blue. That's going to be more of a purple leaning blue. And then the thalo blue green shade is more green, as the name implies. Okay, and then get the let me get some glaze too. My paint's just not moving for me today. I probably need to get my humidifier going in the studio again. Okay, and then my light blue. Do this quickly while this is still wet. You don't want this blue to dry on you. So you get a nice smooth gradient right there in that corner of this painting. And then I'm gonna get most of that out of my brush. And I started with the white so that I had a white base to blend back into because my brush is dirty now, so that white's gonna pick up the any paint on my brush, so I'm not gonna be able to get a clean white again unless I change my brush or clean it out completely, which we don't have time for. So, all right, so that's going to be pretty much what I'm gonna be able to do here. And then I'm gonna get Let's see. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna get an eight filbert here in the 6100 series. And I'm gonna grab that light blue and I just see some areas down here that I wanna get in that I can't do with my bigger brush. And it's okay that that it's showing texture here, that's gonna be fine. All of this is gonna be trees back here, so remember our vanishing point is completely gone now. I don't know why I drew it beforehand, but kinda of needed to know sort of where our sky was anyways. Tiny bit of yellow. Just trying to kind of blend out those edges there that I'm seeing between the white and the blue. There we go. Okay, a little bit smoother blend there. All right. And then let's do our greens down here on our foreground. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and Indian yellow hue. Maybe a little bit of purple. I'm seeing kind of a really neutral brownish. So use some sky color, which is that ultramarine blue. And then whatever color you want your bushes to be in the f distance. Um, I like to use like a, I was gonna use green, but they're really kind of more of a gray. So I'm just gonna use the kind of a purplish, there we go but I want it a little bit lighter. I want it to kind of blend into the sky. There we go, There, that's good. And I'm just gonna kind of tap that along the horizon line. So there's something back there behind our trees. A tank. Hmm? It was a tank. A tank. <laughs> Are you whispering tank in the background? What? Did you hear that? I thought it was just me. <clears throat> okay. So how are you doing? Good. My paint's not cooperating with me today. Mm, paint. It's not doing what I want it to do. Some days are like that. I don't know if it's the humidity in the air or just the user error or what, it just feels like some days the paint does not want to do what I want it to do. Okay, so I'm just trying to blend out that top edge. Partly the problem is that the background paint is not dry yet, so maybe wait for your first layer to dry before you try to do this. That probably would help. I just kind of want that to blend out into my sky just a little bit. So there's 
something there, but it's not super obvious what it is. And I'm going to get... It's obvious to some of us. <laughs> okay. Get some more white here and just push that back right in that area. There we go. You don't have to do white in your sky. You could do blue. You could do whatever you wanted to. It's up to you. It's not nothing wrong. I'm going to go a little bit more blue down low here behind my trees. And I do need to let that dry. Using a dry brush now, and push out that blend, blended edge. You can use your finger. Okay. <clears throat> Let's use some green. Oops, I got a towel in my water. Going to get some Thala blue and woo! Look at that green. And I want a lot more yellow, so I'm going to get more of the Indian yellow hue and the cadmium yellow light and mix both of those. Now this will be our, this will be the color right here. This will be our main grass color. Look how pretty that is. Um, this is too light though. I'm going to go ahead and kind of start it in my lightest areas, but we're going to need to add a lot darker color to it. Thalo blue and some burnt sienna. That's going to make a dark teal, and that's what I'm going to want to use in my dark areas of my grass. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in all the other areas. Filled in kind of my lighter areas with that yellow green, and then I'm going to fill in these darker areas where my shadows are with this color. And I'm not going to be clean about it, I'm just going to kind of messily put this in here. Where I'm seeing really dark colors, I can even add a little bit of purple. Like back in here, there's some really dark areas. And then there'll be some green, some greens on top that are much lighter. Generally, your colors are going to fade as they go into the distance. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of create this foreground shadows here. There's some shadows coming across that lighter area too. So these really dark, dark areas are just going to be kind of in the foreground and then any dark areas that are in the distance are going to be a little bit more muted, a little bit more faded as they go away from us. So we can use this Thala blue and burnt sienna color in the distance. More burnt sienna, the more green it'll be. And then it kind of at some point it turns tips and goes starts to go brown. So you kind of just want to catch it when it's just right in that teal range. You can see it here. Nice, really pretty teal color. And then I'm going to grab some of my more yellow. Add that to it and just kind of blend out those edges a little bit so it's not just like this solid line. And honestly, I'm not really too worried about the, the 
placement of this at this point. I'm trying to kind of go with my drawing, but for the most part, I'm just trying to get some color down. So, and trying to kind of blend out the edges a little, little bit, little bit where they're where I'm laying it down, so that I'm not getting too too much super hard edges here. The harder the edge and by hard edge I just mean like one you know here where you can see the difference between the two colors those areas will be a little bit harder to cover later if we add another layer on top so I'm just trying to kind of smooth out the blend between my two colors a little bit as I'm doing this so back here I'm just adding a little bit of kind of more of a mid-tone green for the background area using the edge of my brush by using the edge of my brush like this and kind of feathering it side to side I'm going to get a softer line here on my horizon so I want it to be a little bit more smudgy blended and that'll just give it the illusion that there's stuff going on it's not a solid straight line there that looks good let me get a little bit more of my dark purple purpley maybe a little bit of blue so which yellow is that did you have on your palette which yellow cadmium yellow light and and yellow, uh, Indian yellow hue. Those are the two yellows. Okay, thank you. Using. The Indian yellow hue is just a little bit more of an orangey yellow, so you just like a cadmium deep, cadmium yellow deep, or a diary light yellow, um, something like that would work too. Quinacridone gold, Nicolazzo gold, any of those golden yellows. The cadmium yellow light is is closer to a green yellow than a warm yellow. It's it's a cooler yellow. Okay, there we go. All right, so then we just need to wait for everything to dry, which. So while you do. Uh huh. You want to talk about art for Earth? Yeah, I've been. Um, I did a project with uh, Willowing Arts last year called Kaleidoscope, and it was really fun. It was all about colors. And this this year, they're doing a very small, limited release um, series called Art for Earth that I'm part of, and I did a butterfly video for that. And it's kind of in honor of Earth Day, and they're sending 25% of the proceeds of the project to the Tree Sisters, which is a charity that plants trees all over the world. So it's kind of a fun Earth Day um, project that I got to be involved with. I really enjoy getting to do stuff with Tamara from Willowing Arts. She's amazing and um really honored to be part of that project so the link is down in the description it's only it's only on sale for limited time so the sale uh it ends on sunday i think monday's the last day but I, I think it's like overnight so i would i would buy it sunday if you're gonna if you're thinking about it and there's like 89 89 different videos and stuff all kinds of different downloadables and stuff so i've got a butterfly video and the black and white butterfly I don't have the I wish I had the painting with me I don't have it here in my studio but it's a black and white butterfly painting and then a butterfly um, download uh, book download like coloring book which has got all of the butterfly videos that I've done um, in traceable form so you can kind of color them or paint them or whatever you want to do so I'm going to mix up some of this green that's on my palette, a little bit of white and some of my yellow. 
And I'm just gonna kind of tap along that horizon line. Woo! This is still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna try not to mess with it too much, but I'm gonna use this 12 Bright. And just tap, let me see how it's kind of creating these little flat areas. That's what I want. Like that. And then And kind of pull up with it to get kind of grass. You could do this with a, with a fan brush too, but this brush seems to be doing okay, so I'm just going to stick with it. Yeah, kind of creating some, and I definitely need it a little bit more yellow, but I'm going to kind of start with this as my sort of mid tone starting point, and then we'll add more yellow to it as we get closer to where we want to be. There we go. Let's see how that... And then, of course, as we get closer, these lines are going to get longer. The grassy clumps will get bigger and we'll have more definition here. But this is actually <laughs> making grass pretty nicely, so Ooh, it's fast too. So all of these far distant ones, you're not going to see any individual grass, grass blades, it's just going to be flat. Yeah, and that's what's giving us that perspective. And then having these longer, larger clumps in the foreground will bring the perspective closer to us and make it look like it's closer. And I'm just basically using yellow here in some places to brighten up these foreground grasses. And if you want to avoid the like straight lines here, you can kind of come underneath it with some of the shadow color. Get some of that phthalo turquoise, maybe a little bit of glaze. And you can come back over those bottom edges with that to kind of help disguise where the lines start. that makes sense because you end up with these kind of solid lines of, of highlights so if you want to kind of blend those out you can start in your dark areas and just kind of go up over them just a little bit and it'll kind of fade out where they start and it'll look a little bit more natural okay so that's all I'm going to do for now my sky is fairly dry. I'm going to go ahead and give it a second coat. That's why I got this brush out in the first place. But I got sidetracked with the greens. It's like green. All right, let me get a little bit more of my ultramarine blue, a little bit of phthalo blue, and my glaze. And I'm using the glaze because I've already got color down, so I don't need a solid coat. I just want to solidify it just a little bit. Glaze will help me do that without having to add a bunch more paint on here. It'll dry faster for me too. So, right, so then I'm going to get some glaze and a little bit of white. And I'm just basically going to do what I did before with my sky. And give it a second coat here. I need a mid-tone. I kind of went too light there at first. You saw kind of, you know, trying to go up into that darker area. It wasn't blending. It was just kind of 
going over the top of it. Okay, there we go. So I'm just trying to get kind of a lot of that streakiness out of it that I was seeing. Need more white. Okay, so I'm going to take the white and just kind of push back up into that color. And as it's picking up color, I'm just going to wipe it off and pick up more white. As it goes up into the blue, it's going to pick up the color and you'll see it because it'll start to do stuff like that. So just wipe it off, pick up more white, go back into it, push it back, keep blending, wipe it off back in now that I have a clean brush I don't have any white on my brush now wipe it off and now I'm just gonna kind of go long strokes all the way through this try to get wipe it off it's really important to keep wiping it off because otherwise you'll just end up put, putting paint where you don't want it I'm basically trying to kind of smooth out you could do a, use a mop brush for this. Some people use a mop brush. I don't I don't tend to use a mop brush because I'm kind of lazy. I just like to use whatever I've got in my hand to do this. But some people put their paint down and then grab a mop brush and blend out with that. And whatever works for you, that's what I say do. So some people use their fingers um, to, to blend out stuff like this. That's fine too. Just whatever you find works. I tend to just use a brush and kind of wipe it off as I go here. Okay, so that looks good. Got a nice really dark gradient. Probably a little too dark, but we'll see. All right, now I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and stay with this brush. It seems to be working. I'm going to clean my palette off because it's got, I got no room to put my pink colors. I hate to get rid of all this pretty green, but really have. When you do that, people want to see the, the birds. Well, first there's the, the pup there. Oh, sweet pup. Easy. Down. I know. But then this is the challenge image. <laughs> it's in the very, very ugly stage. Don't judge it yet. It's it's still oh, very, very new. It'll so, be, it'll be, we'll be adding lots of fun pup. colors on top. Pup. <laughs> pup. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's one of those projects that, that is going to be real, I think, hopefully easy for you to adapt and use your own dog, you know, if you don't want to paint mine. Um, we're doing that with my $10 level Patreon folks uh, right now this month. And we may have time to do two because we got so much done on it this week. I think we might end up doing two dogs if I can get it done next week. <coughs> we'll see. Dog and a cat. Dogs because I'm doing it for my groomer. Like Kashmir. I'm getting free grooming out of this. Kashmir's been here for how long? And she only has one Ricky Dink painting. <laughs> dogs only have two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And who's excited to see me when I get home? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> She's excited in her own way. Uh huh. <laughs> She's showing it inside. She's mm -hmm. inside. She's jumping up and down. All right. So there we go. I'm trying to, I'm stalling for time here, trying to get this to dry. Um, so let's go ahead and mix up some colors here. I actually might use, I might use this one, the six Aspen Filbert. So let's go ahead. Oh yeah, I need more white. That's what I needed. I'm getting distracted by what you're doing and not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay. Good amount of white there. And I'm, that's probably still not enough because I'll probably be need more of it as I'm mixing a lot of pinks 
for this. So our darker, this is actually fairly light in general, like the whole thing is fairly light. And I'm going to go ahead and mix it with a palette knife instead of my brush so my brush stays cleaner. So I'm going to get a little bit of white. And you definitely want to start with white when you're mixing your pinks because your red's going to go real far. Just the tiniest little bit is going to mix up quite a bit. Okay, so there's the Alizarin Crimson. This is the Windsor Newton brand um, Alizarin Crimson, which is a little bit pinker than other Alizarin Crimsons. So it's got a really pretty pink tone. And then I'm going to grab the little, about the same amount, so just a tiniest little bit on the tip here of the Quinacridone Magenta. And you can really see the difference there. And the Quinacridone Magenta is much more of a violet pink, magenta pink. Very bright and pretty. But I really like the Alizarin Crimson. See how much warmer that is? You can see it. You can really see it now with the... It's a little overblown there on the... You can see it in the, on the palette cam. It's kind of looking a little bit white, but it's a nice, so those will be nice yellow or nice pinks to use. Um, if I didn't have this alizarin crimson, I would have to add yellow to my, to my magenta to get this color. So just a little bit of yellow. Let me try that. Oh, I mean, I'm going to just get the tiniest. In fact, I'm going to use the Indian yellow hue because it's closer to closer to pink <clears throat> or closer to orange, I mean, closer to the red. Yeah, so that's that's pretty close to that color, the alizarin crimson color. So if you don't have the alizarin crimson, don't feel like you have to have it, but just go ahead and mix two pinks. So you're going to want it like a more um, warmer pink and then a cooler pink with the magenta. And then I'm going to mix up a little bit more of the darker tone, which has got just a little bit more of the alizarin crimson in it. And you can see I'm scraping up my mix and offloading it into like a smaller area here. And then get the magenta and some white. So, and really I'm not gonna use much of this color. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of blue to it because it's kind of slightly purple. I have the purple there too, just in case. I think I'm going to use the purple mostly for the for the tree trunks though. Okay, so I've got warmish color and then this cooler purpley color there. <clears throat> All right, and let's go ahead and mix up some more of my sky color too, just to have it. Just a little bit of them in thalo blue and then quite a bit of both of these. Mid ultramarine blue and thalo blue with white. down to the end of the tube there it's hard to get out thank you mm -hmm. 
All right, so looks pretty good. I need to go back to the other video, the other. Yes, sorry. Okay. All right, so let me go ahead and put back in kind of lightly my my lines for my tree, which are right about here, somewhere up to up in here. So I have a tree in here, one in here. And they're all going to kind of come down to this point right here. I'm just very lightly marking these out. There's one tree that's just kind of kind of this side of center. So this one is right in between the center and the third. And then this one is just, if you kind of come on this side of center, and then the next one's fairly close. And then they just get closer and closer as they come off. And like I said, I know I have a video on how to get those exactly if you want to separate them out. Right? It's the Paris one with the red trees. I just don't remember it off the top of my head. Paris still. Paris something. I don't know. It's the only one that I've got that's got red trees in a Eiffel Tower. So. <laughs> Okay, um, all right, so I'm going to use the this brush, the Six Filbert, and I'm going to grab my lightest pink hair. This is the magenta pink. I'm going to get a little bit of my blue from my sky, mix those two together, and use that all up back in here, and I'm just going to maybe go a little bit more blue with it. to kind of fill in this mid range area here with pink and go a little bit darker with my sky color maybe get a little bit of this darker magenta here there we go and I'm going to add just a little bit of burnt umber to gray it out. So it's just kind of slightly gray. There we go. That's good. Right there. So I'm going to go um, to kind of where these ones are disappearing off the horizon line here. And then come up just about oh an inch or so. Leave a little bit of the blue sky showing through here and there, but just trying to kind of create a little bit of color back here behind, just in the distance. Just needs to be just a couple shades darker than my sky. So, and we're going to have a lot of lighter colors going on top of this, so we want it dark enough that our lighter colors are going to show up on it too. And then as we get up into the sky, I'm going to try to create more actual kind of tree fluff, for lack of a better word. Get a little bit more blue here. And just keeping in mind my perspective here so I don't want to go much higher than this but there are some areas like in here that the there's a lot of the sky peeking through so I'm really just trying to kind of form up some distance values behind my trees and these trees that are in the farthest away from us okay let's do the same thing over here So that other painting was Easy Eiffel Tower. I put a link in the chat. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. 
yeah, so it tells you how to do these. And there's some way you have to do like a line across and measure from the halfway mark. I don't remember how, how it's done. It, I, it's that one there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Yeah, a long, long time ago. Long, long. That's why I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I looked it up to refresh myself just before the video, so it was all fresh in my memory. And then it's just not something I use that often, so I just don't. I July just didn't retain it, obviously. It's almost six years ago. Mm-hmm. Six years—that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so using some of the warmer, warmer pink with some unbleached titanium, which gives it another like a shot of warmth. And I'm going to. Start doing these trees very back here. And I'm going to keep these these trees kind of impressionist style. I'm not going to get too detailed with them, I don't think. I kind of want to keep them sort of soft and, you know, that kind of... I was looking at the Van Gogh. He has this... Uh, Oh, I don't know if it's apple trees or pear trees or something blooming um, that he did. This is this pink, pink tree in an orchard, and I really like the look of it. You know, I just love his art anyway. So, kind of wanted to try to capture that essence, not necessarily copy it, but you know, just kind of that little bit bigger brushes will give me that bigger brush stroke feel and kind of that more impressionist style of paint that. I kind of want. Okay. Did he have any kids? Van Gogh? Yeah. No. He oh, wasn't cause, married. Because there would be many Van Goghs. What? <laughs> what? There'd be many Van Goghs. I don't get it. Mini vans? Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. But, but I like that. What? <laughs> <laughs> Are you talking about? Okay, I need that timestamp. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? All right. Um, I need to before I do much more. I need to draw in my tree trunks because that will inform me where my actual branches are going to go. That's probably smarter. Stop. Even though I want to keep going here, Just force myself to stop. Back up. All right, so my purple is the fluid paint. So if you have a fluid acrylic, grab that. Um, or a duck, uh, if you have a fluid black, you could add a little bit of purple to that. Or, you know, uh, I would say have at least like a fluid white and a fluid black um, of the uh, titanium or the um, titanium white and carbon black or um something of a fluid acrylic if you're using heavy body because this when you get to doing stuff like this you really need a fluid paint it's just a nice it's faster to have that as a base and then we can just grab these lighter colors and mix them in or grab the other tones of color so you could add blue to your black or you could add purple to your black or magenta whatever um so I want a just a really dark, I'm using burnt umber, basically using my dark colors. So the, the purple, the ultramarine blue, and the burnt umber. And ultramarine blue and, and burnt umber on its own makes kind of a gray. So it's gray black, so it's already going to work. All right, so I'm going to start in my dark area here, which is... Kind of about halfway down my my green area here, my foreground, and I'm facing the brush away from me. So you see, I've got the point, the tip pointing down, since I'm going to be pulling up with it. I need more water. And right about in here, I'm gonna, ooh, that brush is doing weird things. I may have to get a different brush. See how it's splitting off for me right there? I don't like that. I'm gonna get a different brush. This is the first time I've used this one. I'm not used to it, so it's not, it's, it's, see how it's 
cut, it's got these short hairs right here. So as I'm bending, it's kind of these shorter hairs are sticking out and getting into the way, which I don't want. Uh, let me see. Let me try a... Sorry, hon, I missed you. Lost your messed that's, up your close fine. up. That's fine. Your close up there. But no, it's. I'm just gonna it's try a regular three round. Mm -hmm. It won't be cut the same. So see how I'm bending. It's not. It's not that one had like shorter hairs right, like right in the middle of it. This one is not gonna do that. So I can bend it around these corners, and it won't split off and create these weird fuzzies that I don't want. Okay, you can do it now if you want. See how um, now I'm able to turn these corners and not get the stray hair sticking out. Sometimes it's just the brush. Sometimes it isn't user error, you know? So you kind of just have to know your brush and what it should be doing for you. And if it's not doing it, then switch it out. Don't keep using a brush that's not working. Okay. Very, very, very light touches to get these smaller brushes, smaller. And then see, like right here, it's a little bit thick right here, and then it goes thin right here. So I wanna widen out that rest of that so that it goes wide because your branches are going to be thinner as they go away from the branch. It's, they shouldn't get thicker. And if they do, then it kind of will throw off the realism of your tree. So. And these are very thin branches. And if you do get, you know, kind of a thick area here, you can, you can also just cover it with branches, you know, cover it with flowers and stuff, so. I kind of went a little bit thick on that area there. So there's some stuff coming out, out away from us, back this way. And I'm not gonna do all of them, and I'll probably end up coming back in and adding more later, so. After we get our trees in. Someone asked, could they use a dagger? Yeah, brush. yeah, they could. Um, you just have to be careful with those that your 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 uh, lines could get thicker in weird places. So just have to keep an eye on where your lines are. Man, it must be a dagger brush then. What? Thick in some weird places. <laughs> Even the dog's moaning at that one. Silly. Just trying to get some small, distant tree trunks happening. These ones back here are all kind of pretty close together, just the way they're crowded, because they're all kind of next to each other. So far away. And then follow this in here. There's one kind of right in here.
I just want to make sure that my green in the distance is bright enough. Um, I might have to add a little bit of the brighter green here. It might not be quite bright enough in some places, but I think I can paint around these tree trunks. There's not so many of them that I, I think I can still get that same look. All right, so I've got two lines here. I've got one back here and I've got one right here. So I want to make sure that this one is going to write in here. And then there's another one on this line here that's back in here. Make sense? So these two are together in a line. And then there's another one back in here on this line as well. In here somewhere. good so let's put our next big one here that's on this line this track here right in let's see right off center so if I find my center I'm gonna go this way right about where I just was at and start it right here and come up I do think I need to go a little bit brighter in my grasses back here, so I'm probably going to have to cover some of this up a little bit with some grass. may have to do these tree trunks again, but at least they'll kind of, we'll have an idea of where to put our, our foliage. And at the bottom of them, I'm just going to kind of smush out that bottom edge and try to kind of blend it down into the grass and the grass should be dark enough that it kind of just disappears if your grass if your if your foreground here isn't dark enough that'll be a problem so just darken up that area where it's going down in so it just disappears down into that dark and then we'll put some lighter color on top to you know set it in a little bit better but um most of all these should kind of have some sort of a dark area underneath where they're going in and if they don't just kind of use your brush and sort of create some dark area there for them to go down into. It's kind of an easy way of hiding the bottom of the tree trunk. All right and then so here's our vanishing point here. I'm just going to mark that out. Right in here somewhere. Right? Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. Right there. Kind of halfway up the opening of that, just slightly above the horizon line. Right in there somewhere. So, let me do another one. Another one, another one. Just close together. There we go. And these distant ones you're really not seeing much, but just kind of maybe a little Y where they come up. These are really small back in here. And then basically this, I'm gonna go ahead and put one that's kind of in the, in the shot, really the, a little bit more in the shot than what is in the photograph. And you see how we've got this really skinny 
area here that so I need to thicken up that branch all the way down. here. I'm going to get some of my sky color and add it to that ultramarine blue and just kind of find this side of my tree here and just highlight this side of the tree. Some blue. I'm too zoomed in, honey. I Sorry, I was watching your latest TikTok video there. Okay. You did the cherry tree today? From a yeah. couple years ago? Yep. Yeah. With the fence? Mm hmm. You got one of the Eiffel Tower and the pink tree kind of in the corner, too. I yeah, I do. I do. You got lots of. Flowery that's a cherry. Trees. I, mm -hmm, I do. I know I have one that's just a cherry blossom tree too. That's from years ago. I got into an argument with a lady about it because <laughs> apparently it wasn't like her cherry tree that she has in her yard, and so oh, it wasn't wow. a real cherry tree. <sighs> that's before I just blocked spam, you know, trolls. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know better. Well. She got. A very heated discussion. Some, someday but. we'll make it to her house and paint her tree. Yeah, I don't know. She was very, she was very adamant about how it should look. All right, I'm gonna mix up some more of this bright green, which had a lot of the Indian yellow hue. Mostly yellow. I mean, you see how much yellow, just the slightest little bit of blue makes this kind of that bright green here. And I'm going to add some of it to the distant. I've got my four short filbert now. I used the 12, um, 12 bright to do it the first time, but this time I'm having to go in between trees, so mm -hmm. I'm going to use a little bit smaller brush here, <laughs> which ideally you have your background completely redone before you do this, but I didn't, I didn't do that, so I'm just making it a little harder on myself for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> But really want and if I need to just go over your tree trunk and put it back in later it's fine it's not a big deal I know it can feel hard to do that but if you need to if you need to go around it something and it's just not you know you know it's better to paint it back over than to try to go around something sometimes I'm just tapping to kind of get a softer, there we go, softer look. And then I'm going to set my brush down and just kind of scrape it upwards. And this is working because it's a stiffer bristled brush, but you know, if you don't have a stiffer bristled brush, you can do it with like, like the, the bright was working fine. You just kind of have to let your brush dry out just a little bit, a little bit um, less water in your brush. And pretty much any brush is going to kind of start to separate out and do get give you some texture. Um, 
There we go. That looks good. That's working. And I can use a fan brush here, but I'm I'm I like to use the biggest brush that I can do, you know, that I can fit into an area to do stuff like this. So if I can use a little bit bigger brush, it'll just save me time. The fan brush holds a lot less paint, so I'd have to reload more often. So that's why I'm using this one. I'm gonna grab some blue and do some blue green with these grasses in this area. See they're in the shadows, so they're gonna have a little bit less of that yellow um, catching the light. Get some turquoise going here. The greens in the in in sunlight will be yellow because the chlorophyll turns them yellow as the light passes through them. Um, so a lot of these greens that you're seeing, you know, that have a lot of yellow in them, they're obviously sunlight. And then the ones that are in the shadow that are not getting the sunlight passing through them will be lighter, but they won't be getting the yellow tones. So they'll be more of a blue toned shadow color like this. So we've got some, you know, stuff going on here. These are still getting a little bit of a, like a indirect sunlight, but they're that blue green instead of that yellow green. So just adding some of that in here. And again, trying to make sure that these ones in the foreground are getting taller. So the ones in the foreground, you can even do this with your grasses, just like we do with our trees, if you wanted to, just to make sure that you're, you know, keeping your perspective right. Just to be like, you know, our grasses up here are gonna be this tall. And then as they get farther away, they're gonna be shorter and shorter and shorter. So just making sure that you're keeping these grasses back in here much, much shorter. And the ones that are way, way in the distance are just a straight line, just basically no grass, you know, you're not seeing any individual blades at all. Way back in here. The straight lines, and then as we get to about halfway down, maybe we'll start to start to see some little bit individual grasses and things. And then more and more as we get closer. some white here to really pump up the value. Nice. Okay, so we're getting some good good distant. It's already feeling Feeling that distance, amazing. Just kind of, you know, these lines, creating these lines and widening out this area in front here and having that narrow depth of field in the back there. It's already feeling like what we want it to look like here. And there's some little areas where the light is crossing through these shadowed areas too, so we can kind of make sure that we've got some of that broken up there. And then in this foreground here, there's some really tall grasses. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get those in with a fan brush. And this is another um, time when you really need fluid paint. So I probably could even get my fluid white here. I'm gonna see how this does. I, know I want it very yellow and very light. So lots of white. And there we go. Okay. 
test it on your palette, you should be able to just barely touch and it'll come off. different directions too so that I'm not getting too much of a line here so when I get this line right here where it starts which is inevitable right I'm gonna go below it and go in the opposite or separate directions just to kind of smooth out that area there so that it's not so obvious so That makes sense. Just kind of trying to disguise where my starting stopping points are here. Really, again, need to do this before I did my trees. I just really jumped the gun there. And then I can come back in with stuff like this and also kind of tap in around just like little taps around the bottom of those areas to hide any grass, you know, any obvious areas where that grass started and that I don't like. So, getting some of my shadow color here. I'm gonna put some of that back in too. And be careful because I don't want to cover up my grasses in the foreground here, which I just did. I'm gonna have to put some of those back in. If it's not, if it's clumping together, then you need more water. So there we go. Need to be able to see those individual bristles. Anywhere like this is gonna create a solid line. So I'm just pressing this, pressing this down to kind of try to separate out those bristles. That's what I want to see right there. So that when I get it down to here, it's gonna individual little grasses. Which 
I'll leave it for now. It needs to dry. It's driving me crazy. All right, let's go back to. I am driving you crazy. Sorry. Why? Well, you have been for like 35 years. <laughs> Ooh, no. Has it been that long? Longer? 30, yeah, no, 36 years, 37 years. How long? I don't know. Yeah. At least track after a while. We're getting old. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use some of this. I'm going to use the angle, the six angle bright here. And this way I can get kind of the little dots and dabs out of my trees here. And if I can't see this against that background color, then I need to just go back in and add a little bit more of that first background color, which is kind of that magenta and ultramarine blue mixture. So I'm going to go back in and do some of that in in here, so I have some of the darker. Darker color. And this, I think it had a little bit of burnt umber in it too to kind of gray it out. burnt umber with that magenta and sky color that I mixed before. That's going to be a nice background to our cherry blossoms and they're kind of just almost in a straight line here so can I just pick out some lines and just dab those in. And they're going on top of my tree branch too. This is not just behind it. And these are smaller. Use a little bit less paint here. Let her touch. Not a whole lot of this is in front of the thing, but there's a few places like in here that it's kind of going in front. Um, below the horizon line. Just in a few places. Whoops. branches to those yet, but I will later. Okay, nice. saturated got a little too much there so I'm adding a little bit of blue to it but a little bit more saturated pink here in a couple places I'm not going to use a ton of this more saturated color though because I'm not seeing a lot of it the colors are pretty subtle in this the light from this but this main tree I'm going to kind of make a little bit more saturated pink 
Maybe give a little bit of it to this side too. And there's a little bit of green in the trees too. So I'm gonna get a little bit of this green from my from my grass and dab a little bit of that up in here. Just a little bit. And mainly on this big tree here. That's in my foreground. Just a few little bits and bobs. Okay. And then get my warmer pink, maybe a little bit of this mid-tone. And the ones that are in the sunlight the most over here, I'm going to kind of give some of that color along these ones right here. titanium with this color and then some white and now I'm just gonna kind of leave some space and just dab in some of this color on some individual trees and I don't want to do too much because I don't want to lose that depth that I've got going on here Good feel of distance happening. Getting that brightest, brightest pink. And if this is not showing up, then that just means that you need to make sure your first layers are a little bit darker. Again, I'm doing this a little bit more impressionist style, so the brush strokes are a little bit thicker than they would be if I was trying to go for, you know, something more a little bit more subtle. I'm going to get some of that warmer color and add that in there. These ones that are kind of facing the sunlight area. You could use your deer foot stippler instead if you want smaller. But the cherry blossoms actually do, or these ones at least, whatever these are, apple trees or whatever, they have, they're, they're kind of growing in clumps. So they do have this kind of look of, if you look at them kind of squinted, like they kind of do have a little bit of this rounded, like happening that they were getting with these dotted brush strokes. You know, we're kind of seeing these little clumps happening in the tree so it's, it's working I think I'm going to leave some darker areas here not everything's hitting the light and if the 
these are not showing up, then just make sure your background gets a little bit darker behind this. And it really, in the photograph, you can't tell which where one tree starts and the other one ends, so I'm kind of trying to create that in here, even though it's not in my photo. I'm trying to kind of separate out this tree just a little bit from the ones behind it, just so that it's just because I want it to be separate, but I'm using some white white now. Pretty, pretty close to white here to get some. Brighter highlighted. Yeah, right against that blue is really effective. color over here where it's away from the light so these are kind of my cooler colors got more of the shadow colors more of that purpley tone to them the more magenta tone over here some of the highlight color. There is a little bit of highlight. I'm going to try to kind of hit it on the sunlight side, so this right side of the thing. So if I've got a little pink thing here, I'm going to kind of try to hit it on that side so it makes sense that the light's hitting it. at my outline of my tree and just make sure that I've got kind of a good shape for it I like get a little bit of the brighter more reddish toned pinks side tree get some of my more magenta color over here I like it okay start come along some of the more magenta colors over in this tree. And then the warmer red pink on this side, sunlight side, where the sunlight's hitting them. This one is kind of in this get a lot of light, so I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this color here and do a little bit smaller if I can get my brush to do it. A little bit smaller dots for this one that's a little bit farther away.
So the size of the dots will kind of differentiate this one that's in the foreground. I've got the ant on my palette. What? Yeah. Just crawled up underneath it. He got away. I'm not loving this happening right here. So I think what I'm going to do is um, darken this part of my... I'm going to get a little bit of the purple. A little bit of my sky blue. Just add a little bit darker color over here. contrast in order to, there we go, have depth. If I have all my colors on the same range of values, there's just no depth. So I just have to create a little bit of depth there, adding a little bit darker colors here. And this will help now that tree's separate. Okay, that's better. my smaller fan brush. I'm going to get some of the yellow blue, some burnt sienna, and Indian yellow hue. I'm going to add some darker. kind of lost my dark colors in here. easier. So should just be able to run it through without any resistance. So it should kind of be the consistency of milk or ink. Very thin. I'm grabbing some of this green that's right here. green. A lot of yellow to it though. In different directions. There we go. A little bit more controlled than that fan brush was. tree branches, my tree trunks. I 
And it's not always going to be that really light green. Some of them will be kind of a mid-tone green, but I'm just going to want to make sure that my tree trunks have kind of some settling. I'm going to go back over this one that got covered up by my grass any time that I cover it any places with my grasses. I got this one covered. Okay, that's good. And then I can put flowers in the foreground too if I want to. There are some like looking like some little yellow flowery type of things. I'm going to get some white with my, let's get some of the more golden yellow. Use that for my flowers. there. So I'm just going to kind of try to create some little clusters of flowers happening. And then the smaller that I make them, the more distant they'll look. Okay, there we go. That's nice. You can also kind of get a similar thing by just kind of splattering, um, which we may want to do. Who knows? You know, I hate splattering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Flowers and splattering, <clears throat> two things that you just detest. I know, so yucky. <laughs> All right. So now I'm just going to kind of look at it and see what I want to do. So I want to add some more branches over the top of what I've got here. So get some of my purple with my script liner here and just pick out some of these branches that I want to um, make sure are kind of on top of things peek it through kind of informs where also just kind of and it doesn't have to be everywhere but it can really help
Okay. Just little branches here and there. And then, do I want to add texture to these or do they look okay? I kind of, not sure. Let me see. To the, to the flower blossoms. I think they're pretty cool. Can I go with the. Here's that little ant. Switch to the two round here. Get some. White. Hi, Fitz Pickle. What you want? What you want, puppers? I'm working. I gotta. He doesn't understand. I know, it's like, why are we inside? It's so nice. Outside. We could be outside right now. I'm going to use a little bit of yellow on here. Do some... A little bit of yellow just on a few of these that are kind of facing the light. I've seen a lot of yellow in these, too. Yeah, someone said, yeah, you got a show tomorrow, so whatever you want to do. Uh-huh. How long you want to go. True. Do we have another show tomorrow? We're painting a boho fox tomorrow. I cannot wait. Nice. I really wanted to do it last month, but I <laughs> was doing the boho rabbit, so... So that's where the... I to do that before Easter, so that's why I did it. <laughs> Last month and not this month. We Oops. changed I did the wrong something. Thing. There How we go. Did that I don't know. Do some of this yellow in oh. the tips of the branches here. I actually see a lot of this yellow now that I'm seeing it. It's amazing how you're, you're, you like maybe not see a color and then. And then all of a sudden, once you notice it, you see it everywhere. <laughs> it's so weird how that works. But I didn't really notice this yellow at first. And then now that I'm looking for it, I'm seeing it everywhere in these trees. Sorry, go get the, the boho foxes through the... Patreon.com slash Angela Fine Art, yes. yes. The $5 level and $10 level will yes have access to that yes and the ten dollar level gets access to the colorful dog too right that we showed earlier Both. right and you get access to all the previous months too so it's not right. just that one it's no everything before that yes all the there's Perfect. several hundred well not several hundred <laughs> hundred <laughs> hundred or so mm -hmm. videos that were from previous years if people want to see what's coming up through the month 
you have your newsletter that goes out weekly that shows the schedules and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you so sign up on thankfulart.com. You'll get a newsletter. And then um, I think on Patreon, I think he's, Brennan was going to post today what is available on Patreon. Um, I'll check you. Keep going. Yeah. Well, he didn't do it today, so I don't know where when he's going to do it, but he's maybe did it on Instagram. No. I asked him to post the kind of so people could go and see what's available. All right, so I'm just kind of trying to tidy it's up. It's on Facebook. It's on Facebook. Yeah, that you mentioned that, yes. Okay, I thought it was supposed to be on Patreon, but <sighs> we'll we'll get it there. It'll be on Patreon. <laughs> we'll get it there. <laughs> <laughs> My problem is now that I have three employees, it's like trying to remember what I told who is a lot harder. I'm not good at that anyways, so it's like. Three, three times harder now to remember what I've said to somebody <laughs> and who I told to do what. Did I tell you to do that? Uh, no, no, I guess I thought, I thought that's what we were doing, but apparently not. Hey, at least I'm not having to do it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> it's nice. I took a day off yesterday. I told Mark, I, like, I feel guilty anymore doing that. But I was just like, I, I wasn't feeling great, and I, I woke up with a headache, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to work today. <laughs> going to have a long weekend. I've got three videos, or two videos this weekend to be doing, and so I'm like, I am going to take a day off, and I yeah answered emails. and So you posted them on different Facebooks. Okay. Um, just... We'll get there. We'll get. It'll be on. It'll be on Patreon today. Like that. Data. Yes, that's it. yeah. That was. The You'll have idea. to forgive us. This time of year is allergy season for us, so we may or may not be under the influence of yeah allergy meds and stuff. <laughs> no telling. All right. But yeah, be sure to, if you are interested at all in the Art for Earth, it is, the link is down in the description. I mentioned it before. Um, it is going, it's only on sale through for, tomorrow. yeah, through tomorrow. So it's just a limited, limited time deal for charity. And uh, all right, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know. I still feel like I... not really sure if it's quite what I want, but... It's hard when, with these live stream videos, because sometimes there's things that I want to do, but I'm not really sure exactly what to do, you know, in the live right in the moment if I haven't painted it ahead of time, which I haven't. I don't do that anymore. Oh, okay, I have an ant on my ankle too. We're just really going to have to get some ant spray in here. Yeah, that was... I just, I think it's lacking depth is the problem. I think I still am not quite dark enough, which I just, you know, I don't want to overdo it, but it, it just needs to be a little bit darker. Get a little bit of that purple and a little bit of my magenta. Make a fairly dark here and I'm just going to kind of add it in a few places. Were you going to do the grasses 
Any more yellow? Yeah, I might. Okay. Yeah, they are a lot more yellow in the picture, aren't they? They definitely are. And again, this is definitely more brush strokey, if that makes it's, if that's a word. More painterly. Yeah, that helps. It definitely has that feel of the Van Gogh painting with these brush strokes too, which was kind of the idea. Now that I have that one ant on me, I keep feeling it on my leg. <laughs> Keep feeling it. it. Feels like there's an ant crawling on my leg now. It's not. Don't see him. I know it's not. Oh, it's just I just checked. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay. So just don't randomly touch you. Yeah, don't. <laughs> I might just touch the back of my neck. Don't do that. It's not <laughs> nice. Show the babies. Oh yeah, we've got some babies on the way. Look, that's in our front door. <laughs> Little house sparrows, or no? Uh, what are they? Uh, purple finches. Purple finches. Oh yeah, heart house mm -hmm. finches or purple finches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're <laughs> and they're little birds too, and those are big eggs. So I'm vindicated. Yeah. <laughs> I actually did look it up, and like for the size of a bird, like a five inch bird, the eggs are about an inch almost. Um, so, half an inch to an inch. So, they are pretty, pretty big for the size of the bird, but probably still the bluebird is still probably a little too big. Those, those but, five um, eggs are the size of the bird itself. Exactly. All together. So, no. obviously, you know, yeah. it's laid over a period of days. Right, right. Is there any pretty way all amazing. Five eggs are in that one no, one not at one time. Yeah, no, no way. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> pretty amazing. And they. We're just gonna have to remember not to open the door at night. Yeah. <laughs> we had one that did that, and we opened the door, and birds in the house. yeah, we got birds in the house. We had some trying. We had some. Um, um, Carolina wrens, we get these little little brown birds. They're so cute. And they they are very, very uh, not afraid of us, too. You know, they come up right up on the back porch and stuff and get into the, get it. They kind of like to nest in our, um, in your grill or they've gotten up. They were trying to nest in our, um, in our, uh, what is that called? Umbrella, too. Last year, but we kind of had to chase them off because we were using it. Well, we kind of naturally chased them off because we were opening it, and then they flew out. But they um, they came in the house the other day when I was in the shower or, or in the bathroom. I left the door open for Fitzpickle, and they came out and could hear birds really loud. Like they were they were real happy about their accommodations, their new accommodations, and they were. Um, just chirping away in our dining room that's right outside our bedroom and uh, I came out and one flew away right immediately and went outside and the other one flew into the kitchen and eventually made its way back out the open door but um, yeah they were like wow this is really nice they were all in my plants off to the side right by the back door and uh, yeah they were going to make themselves a nice little home there all right, yeah, I like that. So in order to make my grasses more yellow without having to, like, put more grasses in, I can just glaze it. I'll try that first and see how it does. So I'm just going to use my cadmium yellow light and my glaze. And you can use water if you don't have glaze. But... <coughs> Just paint it over this area and it will tint any of the lighter areas that are in here will get tinted brighter yellow it's not going to work as well in the darker areas 
obviously, because this color is lighter than those darker areas, so it's not going to affect them as much. But the light areas that have a lot of white in them, that will already kind of, this color will make them pop. Yeah, that looks good. And then I can get a little bit of white with this and just Just add some brighter highlights here and there. Really bright. This brush is not doing the grasses quite as well as I'd like. So I'm going to have to switch. <coughs> switch to a brush that's going to do a better job. My fan brush here. mainly just yellow with a little bit of white. The white is important because the yellow is not very opaque so without the white in there just really probably not gonna show up. It'll glaze like I did you know before it'll kind of add a little color but it won't necessarily cover so in order to get it to cover you have to add a little bit of white to it. Just adding my brighter yellows. Oops. Just gonna keep it on, adding more and more of this yellow until I get it the right brightness. Try not to get, I was doing those too big back there. I don't want to have long grass blades way back there. It's not going to be realistic. Keep them down here. <coughs> okay. Is that better? some of the middle toned green to add back in some of these areas that I got a little solid. Okay, I like it. Definitely needed that darker there. It helped a ton. And uh, 
I might add just a little bit of the mid-tones back in here too. And what I can do is just kind of glaze it. Grab some of that mid-tone pink here and just glaze in some color over the top of what's there. Especially back in the back. to tell how dark to go until you get your light colors on there and then you know you're already covering them up so this will help all right I think we're about done these are one of those things that I'll look at it a week from now and see things that I probably could ch change because it's got so much going on but, but I think I like it for the most part so and you could add all kinds of flowers and whatever else you wanted to do down here I think there's a lot you could do with this one I do think I am going to splatter though because I think the splattering will kind of just help even everything out I'm going to use this light pink here and just kind of lightly splatter it I'm not going to do a ton on here I'm using the fan brush lots of water with my paint so it comes off really easily I should just barely have to tap it for the little splatters to come off and what this does is kind of I don't know I feel like it it adds that kind of feel of like a dust motes floating in the air you know just gives it kind of a soft, softer look. So I, I like it. You can leave it out if you don't like it. It's totally up to you. And then oh, look at that. There's another one. Um, and then just kind of blot it off so that it's not as obvious. It'll be there, but it's not super obvious. Okay, I like it. There we go. Our first. No, this isn't our first cherry blossoms. It's going to be our first cherry blossom. We did the cherry blossoms with our with our uh, bluebird nest. We do it every spring. Seems like the thing to do. I just love painting them. There. These may be apple blossoms, so maybe they're different. There's a lot of trees that bloom this pink, like this. Kind of hard to tell. We got some questions too here. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's do our questions. And see, that dark looked really dark until we got our tree on here, but now I'm seeing that it's just about the right shade of darkness, so it's good. Doing this technique for the leaves, how big would you make this? Could you make this painting? Oh, you could make it really big. Yeah, you could make it as big as you want it, really. Um, and just upsize your brush. So, you know, I mean, like on a really big canvas, you could use, um, you know, something like this to get really big um, brush strokes. And then just keep, you know, keep in mind that the ones that are farther down here are going to have smaller dots than the ones that are in the foreground here. But yeah, you could make it as big as you wanted. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, so. I have one question for the end. Did Angela use a larger fan brush than the Select 10 Ott? And what is the name of it, please? Yes, I did. I, it is the Select um, Bristle Fan Number 4. So it's a little bit bigger than the... But you could use the Select. I just grabbed this one because it, it's a little, I don't know, just bigger. But there's this, there's the 10 Ott comparison. So it's... It's a little bit longer, basically, but I could still use I still have used the ten knot here um, for the smaller grasses, not these longer ones here, but these shorter ones that I use this for. I could have used this one. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. What is the secret to making colors bright? Mine tend to be on the dull side, especially after the paint dries. Um, part of that could be the paint you're using, Camry. Uh, is it? Um, is it? 
the professional quality paints because sometimes like if you're using things like the craft acrylics those will dry much duller um, because their pigments aren't as uh, good they're not uh, there's a little more binder and less pigment um, so in some paints um, you're just going to get that kind of uh, dull shift once they dry, especially the craft acrylics. Um, if it's your heavy body acrylics and you've got a good quality paint and it's still doing that, um, then you're probably getting muddy colors in your mixtures. You may need to clean out your brush more often between your colors. Make sure that you're not mixing like um, opposite colors. So like make sure that you're not going from a pink to a green with your paint colors um, on your brush because uh, if you've got you know, opposite colors on the color wheel, red and green being opposite, um, they will mix a muddier gray. Um, and so then you'll tend to end up with, you know, muddy colors. Um, this is still not quite as yellow as, as I might like for it to be. So I might just continue to add glazes of this yellow on top of it until it gets there. Um, or I could have, um, what you can do to get super bright colors is um, paint this white. Like if I was to go in here and paint in this these areas that I want yellow with a lot of white um, and then glaze over the top, then that white's gonna shine through and that color is gonna be popping off the canvas. So um, mixing it with white is will dull the color, but painting over the top of a white with a um, brighter, um, with a with the color, um, like glazing over the top of white, I should say, um, will bring out the color more than just mixing it into your paint. So um, try that, especially if you're painting over dark area, like we put in that darker green and then I'm putting these lighter greens on and it's still not quite, bright enough if I was to go in here and do some grass in with a white and just let it dry completely and then go glaze back over it with that yellow um, like I did here earlier it would just pop it would be super bright yellow um, bright much brighter than this yellow mixed with the white that I'm that I did here so is that it yep. huh yep. no okay uh, been lurking have a question for the end would it be okay to do the sky and all the grasses first and put the trees in last yes that would be totally fine yes no points deducted <laughs> totally fine okay what are you using to sign your name okay this is the PBO marker acrylic marker 0.7 nib so I like to sign either 0.7 or 0.5, nothing nothing bigger than that. So otherwise you're gonna get a big, big. Uh, but this is an acrylic marker, so it's made of acrylic paint and it's it does a really good job. I'm gonna just try using just the yellow here in just a few spots and see. I think it's still not quite showing up. And I'm just seeing like a kind of an area right in here that's like a little bit brighter than the rest. Now that's helping, I think. It's kind of going on fairly opaque. Yeah, that's better. So I'm just straight, straight yellow in cadmium yellow light. It's amazing those grasses in the light that light really does shine through it make that make them turn yellow okay that's good I like that better just a little bit more of that bright bright yellow. okay that helped anything else is that it? That's it all right thanks guys so much for hanging out with us today we really appreciate you as always uh, like subscribe share it with your friends even if you just click the share button i think uh, it's supposed to counts as a as an interaction um lets them know that maybe other people who do um painting or watch painting videos might like to watch ours so um it really helps us out a lot so I appreciate you guys for coming back and hanging out with us. We're going to be back on Tuesday with another video. Don't remember what we're painting on Tuesday. Um, it's 
on my schedule. Let me here if I move this out of the way I can see it. Uh, it is the, oh yeah, the terrarium. So this is part two. We have another terrarium that we did with snails and I wanted to do another one in the series. So I've got another terrarium with some white orchids and a little black and white and red butterfly inside the terrarium. So just kind of fun little photoshopped uh, <laughs> terrarium. But uh, so that'll be on Tuesday. I think that'll be a lot of fun. And then next Saturday, we're going to be painting another teapot in our teapot series. So be sure to check us out to watch, watch that one. I think you, hopefully you'll enjoy it. All right. We've got a lot of fun stuff going on this month. I'm really looking forward to the paintings we've got. So I really tried to pick trying to pick things that I'm excited about painting. And hopefully you guys will enjoy it, too. So <laughs> it's the idea. Um, all right. That's it. Thanks, guys. Have a great rest of your weekend. And we'll see our patrons tomorrow for the Boho Fox. Thanks for watching. Bye.